Amen. We are honored, amen. We thank the Lord for another opportunity, amen, to assemble ourselves together. Amen. As Paul said, with those of like precious faith, amen. It's a wonderful thing, amen, to come together in fellowship, amen, to come together around God's word, amen. I declare this word just get better and better than me. I've been, I, 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 y'all saw my post, I just celebrated my 40th birthday. <laughs> Hallelujah, 40 years old in the Lord, daddy, Hallelujah. We won't talk about that natural one yet. Hallelujah. <laughs> but amen. Hallelujah. On the 18th day of September, amen, the year was 1983. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. A month and a half before my 19th birthday, Jesus Christ came into my life. Hallelujah. Changed me. Yes. And I'm giving him all the praise. Amen. I've been on this journey for 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. August of next year, I'll be preaching for 30 years. Oh, wow. God. Amen. I, I was ordained to the ministry, amen, in 94. So next year will be 30 years yeah. preaching. Wow. It's amazing how time goes by. Yeah. But we do give God praise. We thank God for all of you tonight. Amen. Glad to see you. Amen. We trust everybody's day again went well. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. How, did you bring your brain? Yeah. <laughs> you brought your Bible. Yeah. All right, let's go to class. Hallelujah. Book of Galatians chapter 3. We want to thank God for our Facebook audience. Being with us tonight, y'all jump on in, chime in, hallelujah. I want to also remind us that sometime later this evening, this broadcast, this streamcast, will go up on YouTube. And everything that we do, you can go back on YouTube, amen. People go to Netflix, Hulu, Tubi, all kinds of stuff. I want, you, I want to encourage you to go to YouTube and binge watch New Beginnings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You go to YouTube and you go all the way back. You go back when it was just me and the queen. Hey, all the way back to March of 2020, when COVID hit, we started our first broadcast. We started broadcasting at, what was it, 545? Mm -hmm. And we, hallelujah, we were just me and queen. We turned our living room into a church house. Okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I tell you, we had some good times on those lives. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We, queen would do a praise and worship, and we had different ones coming in helping us sing. Hallelujah. Yeah. I think about the time I thought about her a while ago, hallelujah, Sister Denise Walker. Yes. She she went on to be with the Lord, hallelujah, Amen. but many times she was right there with us. Amen. It is amazing. Sometimes you don't know you have greatness among you because a lot of times greatness be sitting among you, but it's disguised. Ooh. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, 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 greatness. Sometimes, sometimes everything you need is right there in front of you. But sometimes you can't see what you you can't see what you got in front of you. Yes. Or somebody says sometimes the trees are hid in the forest. Yes. <laughs> Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. You can't see the trees because you're too busy looking at the forest. Right. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. In other words, don't get so stuck on the immediate that you lose sight of the ultimate. Yes. Amen. God is up to something in these things. Amen. And I firmly believe that. Amen. And as I said, I'm in my fortieth year. And, and somewhere I read, when you look at biblical numerology and you understand the, the uh, you understand the process of numbers in the Bible, forty is the number of probation. Okay. Forty is also the number of transition. Okay. Forty is the number of shift. Hallelujah! When Moses spent forty years, Hallelujah! Forty years on the backside of the desert, watching his father-in-law's Jethro's sheep. God started catching his his bushes on fire. So I said, bridges. Amen. So how you know God will set your bush on fire so you set your bridges on fire? But after 40 years, Moses is 80 years old. You don't got to think about going on the field at 80. But God says, I got a plan for you. Hallelujah. And I don't care how old you are, when God has a plan for you, you got to do what God says to you. Amen. Hallelujah. But anyway, we're going to find ourselves in the book of Galatians. Chapter number three, hallelujah, amen. We're going to go down to verse number, I, I, want, to, I, want, to, I, want, to, I want to rehash a little bit, verse number six, and we're going to go down a little bit, because that there's, some, that there's, a, there's something I want you all to catch here. I want you all to catch the impact of that first phrase in verse six. Hallelujah, Galatians chapter three, verse six. I want you to catch the impact of this phrase. The first phrase says, even as Abraham, what? Believe. He believed who? God. And, I, and I tried to point out last time to you that there's a difference between believing God and believing in God. All right. Most people believe in God. Yes. Well, I believe in God. They yes. tell you that blue smoke in your face and say, yes. well, I believe in God. Be stumbling down drunk. I believe, believe, in, believe in him all my life. Mm -hmm. Many people believe in God. But that's not, that's not what saves you. Right. You're not saved because you believe in God. You're saved because you believe God. 
and there's, there's, there's a hidden word between believe in God and just the word own. Yes. Mm. Believe on God. How many of you know that the preposition, the part of speech is, part of, is a preposition to believe in God is one thing, but to believe on God. Yes. Mm -hmm. That means I have transferred my trust now. See, when you believe on a thing, you came in this afternoon, watch this, watch this. You came in this house this afternoon, and you sat in that chair. I didn't see nobody test that chair before you sat down. Right. You just came in and flopped. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> Let me see what this thing. Let me see what this thing hold me. Nobody did that. You just came in and sat down. Yeah. Why? Because you didn't believe in the chair. You believed on the chair. Come on now. Okay. And if you believe in God, that's what. The, but if you believe on God, you'll sit down in God. Yes. Come on, say my life my is, in is in Him. Come on, say that He and is he. in my life. Let's sit down another way. Say He, he. is my life. Is my see, life. He, he didn't come to get in your life. He came to become your life. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times we got, we got to change how we say these things. Sometimes we tell people, you need to make God a part of your life. No, you don't. Mm. You need to let him be your life. Right. Yeah. Jesus Christ did not come to become part of your life. Jesus. How you better get God some of your time? No, that's not right either. Mm. It ain't even your time. That's right. That's right. That's right. Somebody tell me, who created time? God. So whose time is it? God. So we're here, we're here on whose time? God. Hallelujah. So in essence, we're here on borrowed time. Yes, right. amen. Hallelujah. And one day we're going to have to yield. <laughs> right. Right. It's God's time we're in. Hallelujah. So it's not about us giving God some of our time. It is about us understanding that God is the master of time. God created time. Hallelujah. God over, he's over time. This is much this. God created time, but he don't live in it. That's right. That's right. God lives outside of the realm of time. Yeah. Hallelujah. So when God said, I'll see you in the morning, it could be 10 years from now. <laughs> because God didn't reckon time the way we do. Before, when Jesus was, when Jesus ascended, he said, behold, I come quickly. It ain't been quick. Come on, man. It's been 2,000 years. He ain't come yet. And this is why some folks don't believe. I've been hearing that all my life. That means every day you live, you're a day closer. Ooh. Hallelujah. We got to live like he's like he left yesterday. He coming today. Yeah. That's where we're supposed to live our lives. We're supposed, we're supposed to live our lives constantly expecting him to come. Not done. Hallelujah. When he coming? He coming today. Well, if he don't come today, well, he'll be here tomorrow. All right. And this is the way we live because the scripture teaches us that he that have that hope, say hope. Hope. Now, when you look at hope, hope is not like the seer's wish list. In, in the biblical sense, the word hope means earnest expectation. Yeah. That neck, yeah. Yeah. that neck yeah. out. It means my neck is out. Yeah. And when your neck is out, that means you expect it. Yeah. That means your neck. Now watch this. Now watch this. Remember this. Not, not only is my neck out, but I'm on my toes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> when you if you got your neck out and you're on your toes, you show up expecting. Amen. Hallelujah. So we are to live. We are to live every day with the expectation of the, of the return of the Lord. But until He come, He gave us a He gave us a military command. He says, before I come, he says, occupy until I come. Yeah. Yeah. Say occupy. 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 What does the word occupy mean? Huh? Take up space. Occupy. It means to have an impact. Yeah. To occupy. As a matter of fact, you ever, you ever see when one army goes into another territory and they call it a military occupation? Why do they call it an occupation? Because now uh, a, 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 a military a group of soldiers have come into a place and they have, watch this, taken up that territory. So when Jesus told us to occupy, in essence what he's telling us, but until I come, make sure the territory that you in feel the impact of the kingdom that you represent. So, so in that particular sense of the word family, and the way we look at it, occupy doesn't just mean take up a space. Occupy means to take over a space. Oh, yeah. okay. I mean, there's a difference between taking up space and taking over space. Oh, yeah. He wants you to take over. And in order for us to take over, that means we've got to have an active influence. Yes. That means we've got to do some things intentionally. We've got to do it deliberately. Mm -hmm. Say intentional. intentional. Say deliberate. deliberate. I mean, that, 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 that requires effort. Yes. Amen. All right, so glory to God. So Abraham believed God. He believed on God. He didn't just believe in God. He believed God. And watch this. And it was accounted to him as righteousness. Yeah. See, what God calls righteousness 
And what man calls righteousness is two different things. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be a lot of it's gonna be this may sound weird, but a lot of people are gonna be shocked on that. They're gonna see people in heaven they never think they would make. And then they're gonna be looking for some folks who ain't gonna be there. Why? Because God don't see like we see. Amen. 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 Don't get caught up in a person's action. Know sometimes, see, the, the reality of it is this. None of us act right all the time. Amen. But I love something I heard Dr. Martin Luther King say. He said, God doesn't just look at the individual act. He looks at the overall being. Love that. <laughs> I said, God, he said, God doesn't just look at the individual act. He looks at the overall bent. This is why God would say something like, David is a man after my own heart. Why would God say that about David? Mm. David was an adulterer. Come on. Come on. Had, he was a murderer. Yeah. Had Uriah killed so he could get with his wife. Then right. David do it. Yeah. David was a rascal. Yes, he was. So how in the world did he, how in the world did he get, how, how did he <laughs> get the accolade from God? Because you can't get no higher accolade than that. Not God said, that man got my heart in him. How did the work of God say that about David? Because David, whenever David was, he was wrong, he would own his wrong. That's right. That's right. He would own it, and he would repent. He not would not fall on his face before God. When Nathan pointed that finger and said, you the man. David fell on his face, and Psalm 51, go back and read Psalm 51. Psalm 51 gives you David's prayer. Have mercy on me. Yeah. According to your love and kindness and tender mercy. Against thee and thee alone have I did this that was wrong. Yeah. David said, purge me with this. Hallelujah. He said, create in me a clean heart. Yeah. And renew a right Oh, that's in Psalm 51. Yeah. That's David's prayer after he had messed up with Bathsheba. Yeah. Instead of him saying, well, well she should have been on the rooftop naked. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. She told him no, but I mean, no, no means no. That's right. But David couldn't take no for yeah. right, Hallelujah. Let's move on. Let's get out. Hallelujah. But Abraham believed God. Yeah. Anybody in the house does not believe God. Yeah. Yeah. You know how I know you believe God? Because I see it in your life. Ooh. Say, my lifestyle, my lifestyle is, evidence is evidence of my belief. Of my belief. You've changed, haven't you? Yes. You, you see your change. See, you ain't got to prove nothing to nobody. Yes. Just be the change. Right. Just be who you say you are. Sometimes, men are surrounded right back there is liberated. If we just be who we say we are, yeah, that's all you got to do. You ain't got. You don't have to try to prove anything. You can get get rid of that show them mentality. You ain't got to show nobody nothing. Not you, what, I, what I say, Queen. Mm -hmm. If you be it, they'll see. It. If you be it, they'll see it. That's true. Right. Amen. They're not saying nothing, but I said it didn't say that. Watch, if you be, it. I didn't say they'll see it, but I said they'll see it. That's right. That's right. That's right. If you be it, they'll see it, even yeah. if they don't say it. That's right. <laughs> Write that down. That's going to come back to you after a while. Hallelujah. It was accounted to him there. Say accounted. Now I want you to look at as if you're at the CPA's office. And in the CPA, he's going to ask you about two categories of your life. He's going to ask you about your assets. He's going to ask you about your liabilities. And on the ledger page, you got to sign with assets. Assets are the things you own. Part of your net worth. Then you got liabilities, the things you owe. God says, if you believe me, if you believe me, I will put it in asset. Righteousness yes. is part of my assets. Yes. To be righteous means I got a right standing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Say right standing with God. Right standing with God. Listen to me, family. That's the most important thing you could ever have is have a right standing oh, with God. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. Vicky Wine has sung that song years ago, as long as I got King Jesus. Come on, I don't really need nobody else. Yes. I said, as long as I got King Jesus. Yes. Yeah, I've been lying on cheating. Yeah. Talking about mistreated, yeah. you scorn, talk about showed your born up, down, almost to the ground. But long as I got King Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Hallelujah. Abraham believed God was, it was accounted. God imputed righteousness to a person only on the basis of faith in God. Specifically, faith in Christ. Specifically, even more specific, faith in what Jesus Christ did at the cross. Because everything he did at the cross, he did it for us. Yeah. 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 Don't ever let your eyes leave what Jesus Christ did at Calvary's cross. Mm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, know therefore that they that which are of faith. Know you therefore, verse 7, that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. We told you last time that who are the true children of Abraham? 
We told you that we are. Hallelujah. We told you on one occasion that the Jew is you. <laughs> you are the true seed of Abraham because you're in Christ. Mm. It ain't like what's going on in the Middle East. All right now. Mm. I'm finna make some folks mad. I tend to do that sometimes. You can wear all the prayer shawls you want to wear. All right. <laughs> People wear these prayer shawls, come to church, the yarmulkes on. Come on. Right. And they think you come to church looking like that, that you know, oh man. He got caught all over him. No, that, he got cotton all over him. Yeah. Cotton, yeah. Cotton, yeah. Cotton, yeah. Cotton, whatever that thing they are. Yeah. It, it's a cloth. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You know, when they, they try to say, well, you know, Jesus said when you pray, go in your closet. They said that's not talking about a literal closet. That's talking about pulling the shawl, the talit, pulling it up over your head. That ain't what he's talking about. That ain't what he's talking about. And into a closet it doesn't necessarily mean a, a literal closet. It might mean that. But what it does mean is that you're not praying to be seen of me. All right. All right. Because my prayer is not my performance. I ain't performing. Who that pastor? Who he can pray? You know, you know, did y'all hear his words? Somebody should have heard his heart. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Because when you pray, prayer is not the, prayer is not an opportunity for you to be eloquent. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And, and and to be so uh, you know so articulate and precise. With your subject verb of reading. Yeah. Matter of fact, when I'm praying, I use bad English when I'm praying. Called hallelujah. Because there's something about an intention in prayer, amen, that, that, that goes beyond phonics. Yeah. And, right. <laughs> come on, somebody. Right. It goes beyond proper pronunciation. Right. Hallelujah. When your heart is hurt, yeah. even yeah. if you get before God and just go, God! And that that night. You just have to holler whatever you got to do. Yeah. To, 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 to get where you need to be in God. Hallelujah. Yeah, you know it's not a lot. It's, 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 it's not a performance. Yes. Prayer. Come on, say a prayer. You don't say prayers. Come on. Come on. You don't. Come on, I want you to say a prayer. Say a prayer. You might get up and read something. Prayer is not a recitation. Prayer is not an oratorical endeavor. <laughs> Prayer is inviting, it's invoking the presence of God. Prayer is me presenting my situation to God. That's what prayer is. It ain't about me trying to clash concepts and trying to impress people with my ability to speak and tremble my voice and oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Y'all get off, get off all that stuff. That ain't what prayer is. As a matter of fact, I doubt many people have heard you really pray. Right. They heard you come to church and say some stuff. But when you really by yourself, Lord, come on. Yeah. Lord Jesus. Amen. when you ain't nobody else around, yeah. old folks say you ain't praying until you get up. That's right. <laughs> until you forget about whether or not sister your makeup is right. Amen. Right. <laughs> I'm telling you, prayer is, 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 is the agony of the soul. Prayer, amen, is the resignation of the will. It's, it's you giving over. It's you giving in to God, giving over to God. Prayer, every time we pray, we, it's a resignation. Yes, yes. Come on, say prayer. Prayer is me, me giving God, God my resignation. You're saying not my will, but your will be done. Prayer is not about you trying to twist God around to your way of thinking. Prayer is about you positioning yourself Amen. And coming around to God's way of thinking because I promise you what God has planned for you supersedes what, a, a way beyond what you got planned for yourself. Amen. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They which are faith, the ones that believe God. That's who Abraham's real children. Those are the legitimate sons. Everybody else is just talk about or want to be. But only those who, who exhibit true faith. In Jesus Christ, I consider the sons of Abraham. Let's go a little further. Verse 8. And the scripture, the what? Scripture. How many of you can't get a higher foundation than the scripture? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Scripture is the highest. In other words, scripture is the most authoritative source. Amen. It's the first place we're supposed to look when we're trying to find the mind of God. Yes. This is why I tell you when you come to the Bible study, bring your brain and bring your Bible. Because the first place we look to find the mind of God is the scripture. And the scripture, he said, Paul said, know ye therefore. Uh, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the what? Gentiles. Yeah, or the little word is heathen. Gentiles, heathen. God would justify the Gentiles out. By faith. Now, in order, watch this, watch this. That's right. 
And it was preached what? He preached before the gospel to who? God preached the gospel to Abraham. That's crazy. Isn't it? Abraham lived a couple thousand years before Jesus Christ. But he heard the gospel. He heard the gospel before Jesus Christ was born. Which tells you, which I'm trying to get you to see this, is that Jesus Christ and his death on the cross was never plan B. Some people say, well, when man sinned, God had to come up with another plan. No, he didn't. God ain't got to come up with nothing. It's already come up with. Hallelujah. The Bible said Jesus was slain from the foundation of the world. As a matter of fact, it says the only reason, the only reason why sometimes, many times, most times, why God allowed you to get into a dilemma so he can show you his solution. Yes, yes. Which, which is already made. Yes. Come on, say God, God has, the has the solution before, before I encounter the problem. I want that to soak in. That means, Minister Robin, that God saw the problem before it came to your house. Yes. Son, he saw it before you even thought about praying about it. Yes. He saw the problem before it became a problem. Yes. God has what is called foreknowledge. Yeah. The Greek is prognosko, pro, prognosko, nosko with the G, gnostic, gnosko, gnosticism, gnosko, which means to know it, to, to, to have form, have insight. God don't have, watch this, 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 this blows my mind. God don't have to wait till things happen before he knows. My God. <laughs> Do we know who it is we're dealing with? God doesn't have to wait till you get in trouble before he formulates a solution. As a matter of fact, you got in trouble so that God can show you his solution. I want you to see this now. That's why you got into trouble. You can't get into anything. I'm telling you, I believe this from my nose to my toes. You can't get into anything that God had already made a plan to get you up. The plan is already made. This is why when we get in our dilemmas, don't fall apart. Listen to me, family. This is what your faith is for. Your faith sustains you. Hallelujah. Yes. Your faith keeps you steady even when the hurricane of circumstances are trying to blow you off course. It's because your circumstances fell apart don't mean you got to. Amen. As a matter of fact, I refuse. Couldn't always say this, but bless God I haven't said it now, my love. I refuse to be defined by my circumstances. Amen. I might have went through my trouble, but I'm not my trouble. Amen. Amen. Will, will, will you just say, I'm not what I went through? The worst thing you can do is to give personality to your trouble. That's right. That's right. Troubles are something we ought to go through without becoming. That's right. Amen. Don't become the trial, go through the trial. That's it. Lord, Lord. Are y'all hearing this preaching yeah. tonight? Yeah. All of us gonna go through stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna stand here and tell you, oh, God's gonna bless you, and, and He is gonna do that, by the way. But 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 there gonna be some trouble coming, yeah. and I'm not gonna tell you that because you're in Christ, That's you have an exempt status. No, 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 no. As a matter of fact, some of your greatest trouble you'll ever encounter is after you come to Christ. Come on. Well, the difference is now you're armed for the battle. Yes. Yeah. Why, 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 why do you think Paul talked to the church at Ephesus about putting on some armor? Come on, come on. Who needs armor? In a general sense, who needs armor? Somebody who's getting ready to fight. Come on, here, sir. Hallelujah. If you ain't getting ready to go through nothing, you need no armor. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. You got it. Hallelujah. My question is, are you dressed for the battle? That's the thing. You're going to go through the battle. But the key is, is being prepared. And every day, listen to me, every day, we, Paul tells us to put on the whole arm of God. I don't see no way in the Bible where it tells you to take it off. That's right. That's right. And, it's, and here's another thing that's funny to me, Brother Stevie, when he tells us to put on the arm, and then that's for your backside. Right. Which means there is no retreat. <laughs> there is only advance. <laughs> see, go forth. God never planned for you to back up. That's right. Ain't nothing back there. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing coming back there. But what I love about it, there's a script in the book of Psalms that said he's my rear guard. Mm. Come on, come on. Come on, so my back is covered. Back. Don't you for one minute, I ain't covered. Right. I'm covered now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go. Hallelujah. So God preached the gospel to Abraham 
The scripture says preach before. Before what? Okay. Look at that word before. How many of you know the word before is a time word? That means something was preached to Abraham before something happened. Hmm. In other words, watch this. It was preached to him before Christ even came. But how many know Christ, even before Christ came, literally, he came in a fig? Anybody understand the terms metaphor, simile? You understand the term allegory, type, shadow? Usually whenever you're taking a class, uh, 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 specifically a math class, uh, before you get to the actual exam, they usually give you an example problem. They give you an example. What? To show you how to work the equation. They, watch this. They show you the procedure before you began the test. Oh, you won't catch that. <clears throat> they show you the procedure. They, show, they give you an example. What they call a sample problem. You see, the, it, it, it's usually a diagram. You see the problem. You see the equation there. The algebraic equation, whatever it is, whatever whatever kind of test you're going through, you got the example here. Hallelujah! So they're telling you that if you follow the process, if you follow the formula, because in mathematics there are things called formulas, right? Come on, y'all. I don't want to school Pierce kind of. All right, listen. Up. <laughs> there are. <laughs> looking. I ain't going to school. Guys. All right. <laughs> Say formulas. All formulas is. All formulas are is, is a guideline. Yeah. The formula says, if you obey my, pro my process, I'll help you solve this problem. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. It's called a formula. Yeah. Well, the word of God contains formulas. Yeah. Yeah. Another word for formula is the word principle. Right. Say principle. principle. Now, how you know it? Watch this. God is not a respecter of persons. Right. But he is a respecter of principles. Come on, say the principles will work for you. But you got to work the principle. It's, uh, it, uh, it, I had a hard time in math uh, because when the, when the teacher would give us these equations, <clears throat> I would see brackets and parentheses, and, you know, and I was just working from right to left. And I always come up with the wrong answer. Why? Wow. She said, because you didn't follow procedure. I said, procedure? She said, that's a formula. I said, well, what you mean? She said, you notice know, those crooked, those crooked things that I call parentheses? I said, yeah. She said, you got to do what's inside that first. Because if you don't do what's in the parentheses first, you even watch this, even though you're using legitimate ad, but you're not using the associative properties. Come on, I, I, I learned some of that stuff. All right. You got to use the associative properties in there to work what's in the parentheses or in the brackets. Hallelujah. And I got so prolific at that stuff that when I went off to college for a little while, part of my work study was I was working with people who had trouble in math. I was a tutor in math. If your pastor was a math tutor, I'd have mercy for you. That was my job. I was getting paid to show people how to work equations. Right at that way across college at that time. I'd have mercy. My job. You know? And then I was also getting paid to teach people how to write essays. Because I was always pretty good at writing. Hallelujah. All right, anyway, pray. Principles. Come on, say everything. Everything. Has principles. So when we approach the word of God as a principle way, you look for the principles. Yeah. Again, remember this. Put this, put a pen in this. God doesn't bless people because they get special. God blesses people because they know how to work the principles. That's it. That's it. Because you adhere to the principles. He doesn't respect people. He doesn't just bless one over another. This is why God blessed Abel, but he rejected Cain. Because, watch this, Abel offered God according to the principles of his word. That's right. He offered God blood. Abel, a cane, off of God, okra. <laughs> Which wouldn't hurt my feelings. But, <laughs> I love okra. But, but what I'm saying, in that context, That's right. say context. context. All right, forget that. If I get stuck, I can't get out of that hole. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Then it was preached before. The gospel was preached to this man before. Back in Genesis 12, God called him, called him out of earth, the child. He's called him away from his family, called him out of the land of familiarity. Minister Robin called him out of his comfort zone. 
How many of God will challenge us to come out of comfort zones, come out of places of familiarity? Because Courtney, you can't grow as long as you stay comfortable. Right. Listen to me, family. There is an aspect of growth that is extremely uncomfortable. Yes. <clears throat> and most of us, including one, including the fellow you're looking at, we don't like our comfort challenge. That's right. Hallelujah. You find, I finally got this pillow like I want. I've been moving my head all night. Hallelujah. But if, but if this, you're going to have to shift from that position yeah. too. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. It's important to be able to turn over. Even a person in a nursing home, they need somebody to constantly turn over. That's right. Say, because if you don't get turned, you're going to develop sores. Right. And you know why some folks so sore spiritually? Because they won't turn. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they saw them. Yes. Sorry, because they won't turn over. That's good. That's good. You know why you saw them? You need to get on the other hip. That'll preach, I guess. I don't care what you say. That'll preach, yeah. You saw, you, 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 this is me. You ain't got to say nothing loud. But if you find folks that's always sore, ain't got nothing good to say, always critical, and always full of, full of stuff. <laughs> just, just say to yourself, say, yeah, he need to be turned. <laughs> yes, yeah, she need her pillow for us. <laughs> Come over, y'all. Because you don't see what happens is you got to turn so some oxygen can get there. Yeah. Oh. Oxygen. Come on. You got to turn so some circulation can yeah. come. Yeah. I'm about to get stuck over. I ain't leave that boy. That's good stuff. That, that, that didn't even know. That's fresh off the press. That holy woman. And I said, tell him to turn over. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh, the prophet Ezekiel. God said, Ezekiel down there. Hallelujah. And God said, for 40 days, all I want you to do is lay on your left side. Yeah. Remember that? Remember reading that? Yeah. Ezekiel lay on his side for 40 God said, don't open your mouth. I, I, I got a message. I want you to preach to him. But before you open your mouth, I just want you to lay on one side. And after 40 days, how, how tired do you think he got just laying on one side? Mm -hmm. I imagine everything on that side. I mean, if you lay on a, you on a place for so long, you, you, that, that, that arm goes to sleep. Yeah, yeah. That hand will go numb. I imagine he was numb and sick. They don't went to sleep. Hear me about the Holy Ghost. Yeah. He hadn't turned over in all them days. That side was sleep. Yeah. Hear me about the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I said he hadn't turned over in all them days. That side was sleep. Yeah. Yeah. It was dead. Yeah. He done lost ceiling in his hand. Oh After 40 days, God said, turn over. He said, whoo. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody holler, turn over. Turn over. <laughs> yeah, turn over. There's some circulation getting back in there. Hallelujah. Oh, Ooh, I got to leave that alone. That's good stuff right there. Man. All right, hallelujah. So God preached to Abraham. Jesus, he, he, the gospel was preached in a type, in a figure. We saw that with Quran. That was caught in the book. Yeah, yeah. And the thinking behind Abraham. That was the gospel, y'all. Abraham waited 75 years before God gave him the son of promise. Abraham, excuse me, waited 25 years. He was 75 years old when he finally left her of the child and finally went to where God told him to go. After 13 years, Sarah didn't have a child, so Sarah gave him her handmaid, Hagar. As we get into later chapters of the book of Galatians, Hagar and Sarah is going to be explained to us because both of those women are types. As a matter of fact, this, this book of Galatians is the most important explanation of the type of Sarah and Hagar. We're going to get to it one, one day this year. Hallelujah. It's powerful. All right. Somebody say glory. Glory. It's part of the God. Please understand, it's everything you go through, it's all part of a tapestry that God is weaving in. Yeah. Everything you're going through. Hallelujah. There's nothing you go through for no reason. That's right. Because if, if you don't ever see his faith, and, and, and if we don't get the reason, if we don't get the purpose while we're going through stuff, we'll keep repeating these vicious cycles. That's right. That's right. That's right. You know why some folks are stuck in holding patterns? Because they won't get the lesson. Mm -hmm. Why do you keep repeating patterns? Why, why, it look like they, why, why, why does it look like things keep coming up? They keep coming up because you haven't conquered them yet. Why do a child have to repeat a grade if they don't pass the test? Huh? You got you have, you have conquered that level. You have a conquered that level of instruction. So hallelujah. So the test score, the test score, excuse me, reveal that you're not ready for the next level. That's right. Some folks sing about a place they ain't going. Jesus. You ain't ready. Because you don't want to turn over. That's why you so. I keep going back. <laughs> you got to turn. All right, let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get somewhere. Lord Jesus. 
change the position. Look at verse 9. So then they say they. they. Say they say I, I am they. Say <laughs> I'm one of them. What of who? Read on. Which one? Say it. So then they, which what? Be of faith. How many know when you look at the word, there's a preposition of. Whatever you are with it, of speaks of the place of origin. Of speaks of source. Say, I'm one of them. Because I'm of faith. I want you to, I want you to, I want to get a hold of you. That because you're gonna hear a lot of false doctrine. People are gonna try to well, if you really look, if you really love Christ, and if you really in the Lord, you got to do this, 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 this. So the book says do that all faith. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. It ain't about what I did, it's about my faith and what he did. Yeah, that's right. Right. Say amen. amen. So the name which be of faith are blessed with who? Believe Ooh, I'm gonna watch this. For the glory of your mind. All them years ago, <clears throat> when God was talking to Abraham. He said, leave your kin, folks. Leave your family. Leave this. In other words, he was telling Abraham, come out of your old life. That's all he was telling him. Okay. Come out of that old self because that old self, that, that, that old place, that's not your real identity. Man, when I was out there smoking dope and getting high and drinking, that wasn't who I was. That's what I was stuck in. That wasn't who I was. That's why I was sore. <laughs> that wasn't who I was when I got to do everything I was looking to do. Hallelujah. But one day the Lord said, come out of there. Come out of that place. Come out and come to a place where I'm going to show you. He said that I'm going to make you a blessing. And I'm going to bless them that bless you. And I'm going to curse them that curse you. He wasn't talking about a, a, a geographical location. He's talking about a people that's in Christ. I'm going to say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. That's your identity. Listen to me, family. Blessing is not something you're trying to get. Blessing is what you become. Yes. Oh. Yes. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. So if somebody asks you, how you doing? Tell them, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Yes. You're not lying. Yes. This is who I am. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, I don't see no gain up no money. My blessing is not based on what I got. All right. My All blessing right. is based on who got me. Right. <laughs> it's not, Minister Robin, my blessing, my blessed state it's not based on my possessions. My blessed state is based on my position. Yes. Yes. I'm somebody because I'm in Christ. Yes. Amen. He makes me somebody. Yes. Come on, say I'm somebody. I, I, come on, say I got a position. I got a position. I yes. Now, the challenge is don't let nothing or nobody move you out of your position. Right. Yes. You got a position of faith. That's, that's your identity. You are a child of the living God. Yes. That, that, that's the most blessed place. Ooh, let's go a little further. Look, this, this is about to be good. Man. Let's go a little further. Hallelujah. So then they which be of faith. Say, I'm, I'm of faith. I'm of faith. Say, I am faith. I am faith. <laughs> say, I'm one of them. I'm All right. I'm blessed with faithful Abraham. All right. He received justification by faith. So do we. Yes. When God was talking, watch this. When God, I didn't finish my, my, my sentence a while ago. All those years ago, when God was talking to Abraham, hallelujah, by extension, he was talking to you. Oh, hallelujah. He was talking to me. I wasn't even born yet. My mama wasn't born. My mama's mama wasn't born yet. My big mama. My great, 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 none of them was born yet. Hallelujah. My ancestors were still in Africa, hallelujah, when God spoke to Abraham. I wasn't even here yet. But I was hearing his own. I watched it. I was hearing his own. Yeah. So when God talked to him, hallelujah, somewhere in my spirit, come on, y'all, you got to hear this. Somewhere in my spirit, glory to God, my ear heard, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. I heard the voice of Jesus saying, come unto me, hallelujah. Yeah. I heard him, I heard him, I heard him. Somewhere in my spirit, hallelujah. Somehow or another, when this word came forth, hallelujah, way back in my pristine, poor spiritual condition, hallelujah, when the word of God came forth, hallelujah, my spirit rose up and grabbed a hold of that word. Even though my flesh was in a state of rebellion, my spirit rose up and said, be talking to me, hallelujah. That spirit rose up and said, hush, somebody's calling my name. And I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, wounded, and sad. But I found in him a resting place. And he has made me glad. 
it it took a sad sack and turned it into a glad bag. Woo, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm glad because I know it. More importantly, I'm glad because I'm known of him. Yes. I know who I am. And I know whose yes. I am. Yes. Ooh, that's a blessing. Mm-hmm. Watch this. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now watch verse 10. <clears throat> this probably for us. I won't get to that right here. <laughs> verse 10. I spent about 45 minutes earlier this afternoon in verse 10. Mm-hmm. God started talking to me in verse 10. He started <laughs> breathing in my spirit. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. God says, read verse 10. I said, verse 10 says, for as many as all the works of the law are under the curse. My God. Come on. He said, read it again. I said, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Yes, for it is written, cursed is everyone who continues not in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Well, that's all of us, because none of us kept the law perfectly. That's right. That's right. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Matter of fact, God didn't give the law so we could keep it. He knew we wasn't the one to keep it. He gave the law because the law was, a, was designed, the law is designed to produce, come on, baby, you good. The law is designed to increase our hunger for Christ. Yeah. Uh, the law was given so that God could conclude all under sin. Yeah. Yeah. When you stand before, if you if you get convicted, hey amen, if you die in, if you die in the courtroom and the judge sitting on the uh, he's sitting on the bench and he's overseeing your case. He called you forth. He get ready to send you to jail for robbery. And you said, Well, Judge, at least I didn't kill nobody. Mm-hmm. He said, I ain't sending you to jail for murder. Mm-hmm. I'm sending you to jail for robbery. Yes. All right. Watch this. I'm not sending you to jail for what you didn't do. All right. Yeah. All right. right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm sending you to jail for what you did yeah. do. All right. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm glad you didn't kill anybody in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the process of committing a crime, but nevertheless, Mr. Miller, you still committed a crime. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So the law said that there, there, are, that there are stipulations in the law that outline certain degrees of punishment or sentencing based on the, uh, based on the offense that was done. Yes. So the judge has an obligation. I said obligation. He has an obligation on the law, yes. amen, to, to sentence me. Mm-hmm. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Anybody who watched on 1970s detectives show called Beretta? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that bird. Dun, 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 dun. Don't do the crime right. if you can't do the time. <laughs> y'all know what, Beretta? Oh, yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they said, what? Well, I used to watch Beretta every week. And part of that theme song, I knew it was coming up. I'm about to turn to the Don't do the crime. <laughs> and every week you see Beretta doing different stuff. Got that old, oh, that's not, not a parrot, but what they call it, cockatoo. Oh, we did. Anyway, <laughs> all right. Anyway, I would watch that show, and, and Beretta, he would go out to get the, you know, get the criminals and bring them in, and they would book them and bring them before the judge, and the judge, you know, find him guilty and pronounce sentencing according to the dictates of the term outlined in the law. God gave, God, watch this, God gave Moses the law for his people. The purpose of the law, listen to me, the purpose of the law is not to change the heart. The purpose of the law is to regulate behavior. Dr. King said, I know they can't pass a law to make that man love me, but they can pass a law to keep him from lynching me. You can't make him love me, but you can stop him from killing me. So the law can't change the heart. Again, the law was never given to change hearts. It was given to regulate behavior because the punishment behind doing wrong was was supposed to instill fear in folks yes. so that they, if I get caught, I know I'm, I've got to suffer the consequences. But now the difference between grace and law, hallelujah, we got, because grace is a law too. Yes. Did you know grace is a law? All right. Well, I have to go to Romans 12. Romans, excuse me, Romans 8. Romans 8 says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. 
who walked not after the spirit, but walked after the flesh, but after the spirit. He watch it. He says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Say the law, the law. of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is the law of grace. He said, that law has set me free from the law of sin and death. The Mosaic thing that God gave Moses on Sinai was the law that was that contained curses. If you go to Deuteronomy 28, God outlined curses. If you do these things, then curse shall you be when you go, curse shall you be when you come, curse shall be your basket and your store. God it outlines curses. God says, but if you do these things, you're blessed when you see it. You're blessed in the right. sea. You're blessed when you come. See, we sang that song by Fred Hammond. Like, that's good, but I hate to, I hate to bust us out. But Fred, he really wasn't what, what talking to us. Because our blessing, our blessed state again, is not based on what we do. Our blessing is based on who we're in. And if we're truly in Christ, certainly it will begin to influence what we do. Amen. Are y'all, are y'all listening to me yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. For as many as are of the works of the law. Uh-huh. Hmm. For as many, for as many, these legalists, these legalists in Paul's day insisted that a person must keep the law to be saved. Mm-hmm. If you really want to be sanctified, mm-hmm. ladies, you got to cut your head like this. They tell you to do stuff that ain't even in the Bible. All right. Religion is dead, superficial. It's a dead form. Hallelujah. Try to put you back in a box called bondage. Hallelujah. You can't do this and you can't do that. You go to church and they tell you, you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't do this. When is somebody going to tell me what we can do? Well, in our church, okay, in our church, we don't believe in that. We don't believe in this. We don't believe a woman should do this. We don't believe a man ought to do that. So you sit in church and they, the whole message is about what they don't believe. That's right. yeah. So you sit in church and become an unbeliever. Because their whole message is geared about what they don't believe. Yeah, yeah. Sister was giving a word of testimony over there, a video, about she was talking with, I, I'll leave her name, was talking to a man about his son. And this man was convinced that God hated his son. Cost some stuff he was doing. <coughs> Let me tell y'all something, baby. If the love of God was based on what we did, we all in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Man, I, I, have, I, have to, I have to relinquish the mic. If it was based on my behavior, Lord, all right, I'm out of here. Yes. I can't tell y'all nothing. Because the love of, and here's what the love of God. When the Bible says love is unconditional, that means there's nothing you can do to earn it. Watch this. There's nothing you can do to lose it. God loves you regardless of what you do. That don't mean he approves of what you're doing, but it means he loves you. Hallelujah. And for you to tell somebody that God don't love them, in essence, you telling them you don't love them. That's what you're really saying. And you're trying to put God, you're trying to put the handle, be what, be what, watch little people of that. God, God ain't pleased with you. In essence, you telling them you ain't pleased. I'm not giving sin a pass. You know, sin don't need to pass. It's plenty of it. Pastor, if you preach on that, you're going to give folks a license to sin. People have been sinning without license for years. They're going to keep doing it. Hallelujah. I ain't giving you no license to sin. I'm trying to give you some empowerment to get up out of there. And the, and, the, and the main thing that's going to empower you to come out of sin is when you when your eyes open to the love of God. Yes, right. Because love is the greatest motivating force there is. Yes, yes. Woo, hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Thank God that sister was able to put this man straight. But yes. think about all the damage that had been done. Not done. Tell the folks. See, that's religion. Religion do that. Jeez. Religion tries to measure God's love based on performance. Yes. If I got to perform, listen to me. If I got to perform a certain way to get you to love me, you ain't for me. That's right. That's Because if I love, if the love is present, watch this. If the love is truly present, the action will follow. That's right. Because love is what it does. Say amen. You don't run. So there's work of the law. So here's what I, let me give you the diagram. This is what the Lord broke it down. He said, law and grace. Law and grace. It's in my, my side note. I didn't send y'all these. The side note, even though it's down in the body of the notes and, and, and a measure. But here's what he said. 
It's the difference between a butcher and a surgeon. Say a butcher, a butcher. and a surgeon. a surgeon. Now, how I many you know both a butcher and a surgeon, both of them are cutters? Yeah. <laughs> both of them cut. Yeah. Say a butcher cuts, a butcher cuts. and a surgeon cuts. A surgeon. But now, if you find yourself in a life and death situation, who you won't cut no meat? Why? I mean, we're laughing about it. But I, I mean, obviously, obviously, that's a certain. But I'm going to think. I'm going to think a little deeper. Come on, Facebook. Let's go a little deeper. Think. Why do you want a surgeon to do the cut instead of a butcher? What's the difference between when a butcher cuts and when a surgeon cuts? Because both of them cut meat. I've seen butchers can use the knife as a work of art, so. Yeah. <laughs> be qualified to cut meat. Say what you said again. A surgeon has been taught to cut with precision, and a butcher just. So, so you talking about you talking about different motives. Surgeon, if he's a right, if he's a true surgeon, he's motivated differently than a butcher. Mm -hmm. A surgeon cuts with precision. Watch this. He cuts with compassion. He's cut. He, he's cutting. He, he, there's a he, there's a meticulous way that he does it. Watch this. When a surgeon cuts, he makes sure not to touch anything outside of what he's cutting. Whereas a butcher, <laughs> this dude slinging knives. <laughs> How do you know if a surgeon, if a surgeon operated like a butcher, he wouldn't be in business long. <laughs> Both of them, watch this again. Both of them are cutters. Yep. I, want you to, I want to take you back to Peter now. Because Peter started out as a butcher. But God took a butcher and turned him into a surgeon. Amen. If, 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 if you get what I'm going to tell you in the next 10 minutes, I got, I'll be satisfied for the night. If you get what I'm about to tell you now. Religion, religion will turn you into a butcher. Because religion had you cutting folks' ears off. Yeah, Jesus. Peter was a butcher. Yeah. When they came to arrest Jesus, one of the servants, one of the, one of the centurion servants named Malchus, Peter took a sword. Yes. I mean, they don't yeah. serve him with a sword. <laughs> Peter took a sword. Cut his ear off. But now, watch this. Watch this now. In Peter's mind, he thought he was serving God. Come on, see this now. He thought he was doing the right thing. Some folks, when they cut you, cut on you with law, they think they right. When this man was telling his about his son, he thought he was right. People, they think they right, and they cutting folks and they chopping ears off. Hallelujah. But for cutters, this is the difference. Okay, there's a difference between Peter cutting off Malchus' ear. And rightly dividing the word of truth. Exactly. Rightly dividing means cut with precision. That's what when Paul said, studying to show yourself approved of God as a workman, he not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. That means cutting with precision. This is what pastor tried to do every time we come together. I'm trying to show you, I'm, I'm trying to cut in a way, hallelujah, that I don't do. See, because what's it? When a servant, he tries to cut in a way that he, do, that he does minimum damage. Hallelujah. And the, and, the, and the least amount of damage you do, the less recovery time is required. As a matter of fact, they got so meticulous in surgery. Now, they got these things now called, what, what they call those things? Sister, so what they call those things? Some kind of scope? What they call those things? Laparoscope. Laparoscopic surgery. They got these things now. They're all, they're, 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 hallelujah. They, 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 I remember they performed surgery with my queen. And they did certain little incision wasn't even about that long. What you took? What you did? They took a little, a little small incision and did major surgery. How? Back in the old days, they had to open you up like a fish, <laughs> and it took months for you to recover. You mean you laid up for months? I mean, they they done slashed you up, they done laid you up, check man, you like a fish and I don't know, on operating table. But now, because of the advancement of modern technology. Yeah. 
And some folks need to get they need to get modern technology as far as scripture is concerned. The New Testament is modern technology because it allows you to cut without making too much damage. I want y'all to catch that. That's just ready to turn it over. Hallelujah. It, it allows because God watch this. Because surgery does require incision. A cut got to be made. Queen, we have to cut. There's sometimes when we just have to cut. But Brother Stephen, you don't need to take a sledgehammer to kill a roach. That's right. Get that roach, you got a sledgehammer. Boom! I killed it. You took all the damage you did to the floor. Now you got a hole in the wall. What you knocked the hole in the wall for? I'm trying to kill that roach. Why didn't you roll up some paper and knock his brains out? Clean the wall off. But some yeah. folks in church, they they they, they so heavy handed, uh oh, and they're so heavy footed, and they're so heavy tongued, hallelujah, that they try to you try what you trying to well, watch this. You're trying to well, you got a legitimate concern, but you use an illegitimate means. Jesus told Peter, put that sword up. Yeah. Live by that thing, you're gonna die by it. Yeah. He, was talking, he was talking about the law. Y'all didn't hear me. Yeah. He was talking about the law. Yeah. If you set up here, some preacher stand in pulpit, I'm telling you, I see it all the time. My spirit gets so grieved because I see preachers in pulpits every Sunday and they come in swinging swords. Ooh. Come on in, Auntie. Mm. Hallelujah. We're on the tail end of this thing. They're swinging swords mm. Mm. instead of swinging sword of the spirit. Most of the time, say most of the time. Most of the time, most of the time people know they're wrong. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, people know they be wrong. That's right. Amen. They don't need you to tell them how bad, and how wrong they are. That's they right. need you to show them the way out. That's That's right. Right. God's got a way out. That's right. Again, from what I said when I first started, you can't get into a dilemma that God can't get you out of. The way is already made. Amen. That's right. So, are you a butcher or are you a surgeon? I want you to ask yourself that. Am I a butcher? Or am I a surgeon? Yeah. Watch how you use your words. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you butchering? Watch this. This is what I put in my notes. Hallelujah. When a butcher cuts, he's not preparing the body for healing. Mm -hmm. Jesus. He's preparing meat for consumption. Yeah. That's what a butcher does. Yeah. He's not trying to be cute. Because there's no cute way to butcher. I wish I had some done. Amen. When a butcher, when he cuts, he's not preparing the, 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 the meat. He, watch this. He's preparing the meat for consumption. Yeah. <laughs> hallelujah. When a butcher cuts, he, he, hallelujah. When a butcher cuts, he got supper on his mind. Yeah. Yes, he does. Uh, somebody say supper. supper. And some folks, you go to church and you feel like you've just been butchered. Yeah. Ooh, that pastor, no, he cut on us tonight. <laughs> and he got nerve to be glad about it. What's wrong with you? You need to be healed in your mind. That's yes. right. You love for somebody to holler and scream at you and holler and get in your ear and all this kind of stuff. That, that's not what changes. You don't change a person by screaming and hollering at them. Right. As a matter of fact, scream words are, are rarely heard. That's right. The quickest way for you to lose my attention is to, is to holler at me. That's right. My queen sitting over there never raised my voice in my house. I don't have to. She gets a laugh on me sometimes. But I never raise my voice in my house. <laughs> We're going to holler and scream. That's, that's kind of productive. That ain't, you know, that ain't, that ain't going to accomplish nothing. I never raise my voice. If I raise my voice in my house, she know I either haven't got my finger in a light socket, or I'm in the kitchen, I haven't got burned, something. Because the holler will not be directed toward her. I may holler for her, but I ain't going to holler at her. That's right, amen. Talk to me somebody. That's right, amen. Hallelujah. So in church, watch this. In church, if you get past, because sometimes I get a little loud. But I promise you, I'm not hollering at anybody. But I'm hollering for somebody. Yes. So don't misinterpret my screen. That's a good preach. That's a good subject. Yes. Don't yes. misinterpret my screen. Yes. Because when I get loud, hallelujah. I promise you, I ain't mad with you. When I get a little loud, I promise you, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to twist you around and, and trying to make you do something. That's not that. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm after. Hallelujah. Ooh, that, that three minutes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Again, when a surgeon cuts, he cuts 
Uh, he, 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 he uh, the bush, excuse me. When the butcher cuts, he's, he's preparing the meat, he's preparing the body for supper <laughs> to be consumed. But when the surgeon cuts, he's preparing the body for healing. Yeah, yeah. Say, so the surgeon yeah. cuts, cuts for the objective yeah. of, healing. of healing. And if he's a good surgeon, he's going to cut as every surgeon. He wants to try to find the, the least invasive way to do it. He wants to keep his cutting to a minimum. As a matter of fact, the only reason why he's going to cut is because he has explored every other option available. They'll try every other option available. Most of the time, surgery is the last option. Because you don't really want to open nobody up. Because when you open people up, now they're subject to all kinds of other stuff. Am I right about it? So if a person is really motivated by love, the last thing he wants to do is cut on anybody. Put your sword up, Pete. We ain't coming here to cut off ears. You need your ear. Because faith comes by. Ear. And you can't hear without your ear. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so in, in, in conclusion, I'm trying to close now. I got to, I'm, I'm trying to land this plane. I'm looking for clearance on the tower. Please don't turn the lights off on the runway. Watch this. Hallelujah. He's preparing the body for healing. Listen to this family. He's preparing. When, when a surgeon cuts, he's preparing you to be more productive. Say productive. You see, that's the objective of surgery. He, the surgeon, he's working diligently to try to give you your life back. When a butcher cut, he ain't trying to give you your life back. <laughs> so God told me, he told me, he said, the law is a butcher, but grace is a surgeon. All right. All right. Say, the law, the law is a butcher. Is a butcher. Say, grace, grace is the surgeon. Is the surgeon. The surgeon represents a compassionate, merciful approach. Whereas a butcher, he just trying to get the job done. I don't care how much blood, guts, I'm just cutting, I'm just slicing and chopping. Hallelujah. Go to church and get sliced and diced. But a surgeon is meticulous. He ain't just get that. I'm going to be real calm. I watch this. I love this. And I, I'm closing my Bible so you know, so you, so you know I'm serious. Hallelujah. And the, in, in the OR and operating room, they got the climate just right. You know, the operating room is real cool. Isn't it? it has to be. Because it's got to be, the, the environment got to be conducive, amen, to keep the spreading of germs to a minimum. Because there are certain climatic conditions that bacterial, cat, bacterial invaders can't thrive in. Amen. Give me by the Holy Ghost. Amen. I said there's certain climatic conditions, there's certain environmental conditions mm -hmm. that bacterial invaders mm -hmm. yeah. cannot thrive in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to be how you can. Yeah. I said there's certain environmental conditions yeah. that certain bacterial invaders cannot thrive in. Right. So if we keep the environment right. Yeah. The environment. The environment. We are responsible yeah, right. for the environment we create. Yeah. We are we are responsible for the climate we, we produce. Yeah, right. If you don't like what you've been getting, check out what you've been getting. All right, right. All right. I said, if you don't like what you've been getting, check what you've been getting. Because yeah, right. most of the time, not all, there are some exceptions, but most of the time, you get what you give. Come on, T. You've been here longer than I have. Most of the time, you get what you get. That's right. That's true. Hallelujah. I told my queen, you know, you can't, you can't be at the airport with you on your plane to come in and you and you and you at the shipyard. <laughs> what you doing? Wait on my plane to come in. Well, what you down here at the dock for? Right. You need to go to the airport. Right. So what I'm saying is, your decisions tells me what you expect. Say decisions, decisions is a hint to your expectation. Hallelujah. Is that, is that all right? Yeah. Let's stop it. I think I've given you enough to think about for tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, thank God for our Facebook audience joining us live. Amen. We give God praise for you. You and you. Well, I ask you to bow your heads. We want to have a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. I pray, God, that you would touch us, Lord, and help us to examine ourselves. And here's the determination we need to come to the conclusion about. Are we butchers or are we surgeons? 
And if we are surgeons, then that means we're going to be careful how we use our speech. We're going to be careful how we handle each other. Lord, because I know this cut, there's, a, there's a bad cutting group in the church. And they ain't got nothing good to say about nobody. They butchers. And, and, and if your day wasn't going bad, they'll make it bad. But Lord, I want to thank you for people who come in and change the environment for better. Lord, I want to think I want to be the kind of person, Lord, that when I come in, even when I enter the room, Lord, somebody's load gets a little bit lighter just because I came in. I want to be a contributor, Lord. I don't want to just be a consumer, just suck life out of folks. I want to be a contributor, Lord. I want to be one of those kind of people, Lord, that speaks life into other brothers and sisters. God, this church, New Beginnings, Lord, this, is, this, is, this, this ministry has been so strategically named. New Beginnings is a place where people can come and experience a new beginning. That you don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for our Facebook audience. There's so many people on here, Lord, that's got so many needs and different things. Lord, we can't even, there are too many in the number. We can't even fathom the needs that are represented here tonight, Lord. But God, we know that you can. Yes. Hallelujah. And Lord, the scripture teaches us, hallelujah, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. It says, now unto him who's able to do exceeding, abundantly above all we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. God, you're able to do everything. There's nothing too hard for you, Lord. Yes. And we pray for everyone under the sound of our voice, not God. Whatever the need is in this room tonight, whatever the need is on Facebook audience, God, we ask you to meet that need. Philippians 4.19, according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we thank you for doing it, Lord. We just give you all the praise. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Everybody who agree with that prayer said, Amen. Amen. God bless you all tonight and enjoy the rest of your evening. God bless you. Amen. Amen.